Welcome to another edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. I'm Bob Papa. The Giants travel to Germany. First ever regular season game in Germany. Munich, Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. New York time. We got a big show lined up for you. Carl Banks will go to the coaches tape to break down the Carolina Panthers. We'll look at an extra effort play from Sunday's game against the Washington Commanders. Plus, a little flavor of what Munich's like with Amani Toomer and Brandon London. But to get things started, as always, we welcome in the head coach of the New York Giants, Brian Dable, and of course, my co-host, Carl Banks. And uh, coach, a frustrating game last week because there were so many opportunities in that football game. We talk about building, even off the Pittsburgh game. What were some of the things that were positives that you saw out of the game? Yeah, I think it's the second week in a row we control the line of scrimmage and we're, we're able to move the ball running the football. Uh, we used some of our actions in the second half. We were more productive on third down and, and fourth down uh, offensively. And, you know, defensively, there's just a few plays each game that we got we to tighten up. Uh, we got to do a better job of trying to get the ball out. Uh, we're, we're, we're making, you know, strides. We're punching at it. But, you know, the ball's got to come loose to, to play complementary football. Um, you know, missed some two-point conversions on offense that were, were key for us. So, you know, some good things, but, again, not enough to, to get the results that we want. Coach, we, we spoke last week, and there, again, we don't talk more victories here, but we do talk about things that can travel from good things that can travel into the next game. In the offense, uh, in terms of procedural penalties and yeah. penalties whatsoever, I mean, that was a pretty well-disciplined group out there. Yeah, you know, and, and – Look, we had that game in, in Pittsburgh uh, on, uh, on Monday night that, you know, we went backwards a few times. And, uh, you know, we've, hit, we've been good at that, you know, throughout the year. We had a big penalty down there, obviously, in the, in the red zone. You know, we had three drives in the, in the second half, two touchdowns, a field goal. Really would have, you know, helped us if we got that touchdown there. But, um, you know, that's, that's an element of, of staying on track and, and really not having many negative runs going forward, forward at, the, at the line of scrimmage. Coach, talk a little bit about their profile offensively, the Panthers. Yeah, they've played with a couple different quarterbacks. Obviously, Bryce Young, first pick of the draft in, in 23, and, and he's been playing here the last couple of weeks with Andy Dalton, who's a you know, veteran, came out in, in 2011. Uh, from TCU, um, had a productive career so far. So it re really starts there, who, which, which player is the quarterback. Um, you know, their head coach came from Tampa Bay. He has his own system. Uh, they have some young players at receiver, you know, a good running back. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to do a good job defensively of, of playing our style of football, of tackling well, and then of, of trying to create some turnovers. Coach, um, in their game-winning drive last week, a couple rookies really showed out. Leggett made a play for yeah. them, and then the fourth-round pick tight end Sanders out of Texas. They bring a different kind of athleticism to the game, don't they? Yeah, like it's a good, good football player. You know, we liked him coming out uh, strong, good run after catch, explosive players, got good size. Uh, you know, I thought that, you know, he's going to be a good pro in this league, and uh, he does a lot of good things on tape. What about Hubbard? You know, he's yeah. been around a long time. He's averaging five yards a carry this year. Yeah. Uh, but he brings a physical element to the game, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, they want to run the ball, and he, and he does a nice job with it. Uh, he's got good power. He's got some looseness, good vision. Uh, contact balance, uh, you know, made a great play there at the end of the game to, to get that touchdown there against New Orleans, uh, finish it off, and um, he's a productive player for him. Defensively, every team in the league deals with injuries. Uh, they lost two of their best defensive players for the year. Um, Harris leads the team in sacks. Um, what about their defense? Big blitz percentage, or are they pretty much straight up? Yeah, no, they'll, they'll pressure. Um, you know, I think it depends on game and, and opponent. You know, this coordinator, you know, comes from Vic Fangio's system, and uh, he's been doing it for a while. He's done a nice job. Uh, you know, Clowney has is, is always been a problem historically, and, um, you know, J.C. Horn is, is one heck of a cornerback. So, uh, again, it's, it's really going to come down to our execution against this football team. You know, the blocking, the tackling, the throwing, the catching, uh, the being a discipline, and then executing in, in situational football. Final question. You're going overseas. Um, fans look, oh, they're going to Germany. But the way the schedule is laid out with a Thursday night flight, you don't get there till Friday. It really does become a business trip, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a long flight. Um, it's really a, a normal, for us, a normal road game. Um, you know, we're going to have to do a good job of, of 
eliminate the distractions. Uh, again, it's an honor to, to, to play in Germany, but you know, our focus has to be on the task at hand. Coach, best of luck this week. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Thanks, That's Thanks. the head coach of the New York Giants, Brian Dable. When we come back on the show, Carl and Coach will head to the auditorium for an extra effort play. All that and more here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. They got three tight ends, first and goal to two. Jones back to throw, looks right, throws right to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. Chris Manhurts, the blocking tight end with the touchdown catch. Two receivers tight left, neighbors tight right. They hand, nope, Jones is going to keep it, runs to his left, bounces off a tackle and into the touchdown. Sturdy running by Daniel Jones as he faked the handoff, got hit at the one, and then bounced off the rookie corner and goes in for the touchdown. Jones back to throw, fires it up the middle for Theo Johnson, up the seam, into the end zone, touchdown! They got it right on the seam route that time, and Theo Johnson with his first career touchdown reception, 35 yards. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. Sunday morning, it's the Giants and Panthers from Munich, Germany. The Giants came up short against the Washington Commanders, but there were some extra effort plays. Let's send it over to the auditorium with Carl Banks. All right, Coach. Again, we like to highlight the plays that are above the X's and O's and just good effort plays. And this, uh, this, this film here is of your rookie tight end. Yeah, I think Theo's making progress every week. He's got you know, very good size. He's a smart player. He's very tough. And uh, he's done a nice job here the last few weeks of, of taking advantage of some opportunities in the middle of the field. You know, we're in the fourth quarter. It's three minutes left. We're, we're down by 11. Uh, we're, we got a drive going here. We're at the 35-yard line. It's second and 10. And you know, we basically call a, a four-vert play with you know, kind of stop routes outside for the two perimeter receivers. And Theo Johnson's, you know, main role is to affect the middle part of the field. The quarterback drops back. He sees that it's split safety coverage. And just this little weave by, by 84, you know, gives the quarterback an indicator of when he needs to throw the ball. It's good protection. And it's, it's where we need to have it. The landmark is, is very good by Theo. You know, he doesn't get pushed over too far to the backside safety, which in this case, the safety stand back outside the hash. So we basically got a one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter with Malik and with Hyatt, and those are eaten up by the corners. Wandell is running through the seam against this coverage, is eaten up this safety right here. And now it's just a decision, you know, how the defense wants to play this number three guy. Do they want to move this safety over here to take him? or do they want to carry him with the, with the Mike linebacker? And Mike linebacker kind of settles, safety stays outside the hash. We want to keep it thin away from this backside player. And you know, he makes a great catch going up and then does a great job of keeping his balance and, and finishing for the last 10 yards to get the ball into the end zone, which was a huge play for us to, to make it a, you know, a one score game and give us an opportunity with three timeouts to get the ball back to, to go ahead and drive down here. So, Coach, when you have the four verticals, yep. it, uh, it makes everybody have to take make a decision early on, and that kind of helps create one-on-one -on -one with the tight end and the linebacker, right? Yeah, again, it, you know, the way teams, you know, play this is when they're playing this quarter's coverage, who's responsible for number three? Is it the backside safety or is it the Mike linebacker? And if the backside safety hangs to, to hang out with the X over here and get a double team, then you're one-on-one -on -one with this linebacker. And if the backside safety goes ahead and pushes, then you're one on one outside with the X, you know, who's you know, one of your better players when you put him over there in three by one and you have a one on one matchup over here. So, again, I think that Daniel does a good job of, of feeling what this safety's doing. Do a great job with our body language by Theo getting our eyes back, becoming available. Wandell eats up this quarter safety to his side and, um, you know, we got, a, we got a wide open guy here. And coach, obviously, this play doesn't happen if there's not good protection. Yeah, you know, and, and again, we obviously we threw the ball. They're running a, an inside game here, and running does a great job of smashing the drive guy over there, John Michael. And uh, John Michael feels it and comes back to regroup. 74 is kind of free, so he does a great job of the help process. We got good width by the tackles. They're inside out. There's a clean pocket for the quarterback to throw it. 
And then the quarterback does a nice job of, again, seeing the coverage. But we got a guy, you know, with about 10 yards of separation here with no one around him. So it's a good job seeing it. And then really nice job by Theo of, of executing the play and keeping his balance to finish the play in the end zone. And that's always a positive when your young players just continuously get better as the season goes on. Yeah, you know, and he, you know, he had a big one there in Pittsburgh on, you know, if you remember the week before down the middle of the field. So uh, this guy continues to get better. Uh, he's got the right makeup. He's, he's tough. He's got good size and, and he's athletic for, for a big man. Well, thanks, Carl. Obviously, the whole crew is heading over to Germany. When we come back on the program, we'll give you a little flair for German lifestyle here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. It's the Giants and Panthers from Germany on Sunday morning. Well, let's get a little flavor for Germany. Giants fans are fired up. First ever game, regular season game being played in Germany. For more on the atmosphere, here's Brandon London with Amani Toomer. Too loose, too baggy? No? Good? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. There you go, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Oh, you tighten it up a little bit, too. <laughs> What's up, Giants fans? Brandon London here with Imani Tumor in Munich, Germany. Bro, why you keep looking at me like this? I like the outfit, but I, yeah. I just, I don't know if it's really working, and I, 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 I met a guy. Let me bring my man, Dom. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Who Dom. will maybe Dom. teach you how to wear it a little bit better. What's up, Dom? Dom, rate the fit. How I look? You look good, okay? Thank you. What about Thank the socks? You. Is Thank that you. how, is that traditional? No, no. Oh. no. <laughs> That's on him? <laughs> right. Get us up to speed with all things Germany, food, the spots, the culture, because we're trying to take Giants pride worldwide. Here we go. go. All right, Dom, what we got here? We got some traditional food of uh, Germany. This is a Schweinshaxe. Is it Schweinschnacksna? Schweinshaxe. Schweinschnacksna. Schweins, Schweins, Haxe, Haxe. Haxe. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. Schweins Haxe with uh, with Knödel. 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 Dann ein Wiener Schnitzel. Wiener Schnitzel. I've heard of that before. Yeah, yeah. With Bratkartoffeln. I don't know what that is. Potatoes. Potatoes. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 You've done that before. Don't look like an amateur. He's got an Instagram page. He's got a foodie Instagram page for sure. Everyone like Knödel? Yes, mm -hmm. please. Danke schön. Danke schön. Danke, Danke schön. schön. Hey, hey, I went for it. It tastes good. It's always good. You need some sauce. You know what time it is now. It's beer time. After All right. Beer time. Now we got to soak it down. There we go. Like yes, it. Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always mercy. So, Wait, do you have to hit it so it, the, all the stuff comes like in the movies? Uh, when you hit it in all the. the can do it. Yeah? Then we say, prost. Okay. Three, Three two, two, one. Prost! Tastes so good once it hits your lips. <laughs> it's tasty <laughs> once it hits your lips. <laughs> so. 2007, yeah. London, fast forward, 2024, yeah. Munich. Yeah. The game has grown so much internationally, yeah. man. It really has, and uh, it's a great game. Super exciting to watch, and uh, to bring it to the world is great. Go Giants. What's been some of you guys' favorite moments rooting for the Giants? Super Bowl, with Armani Tumor, of yeah. course. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My favorite moment goes to one head catch from Obi Chain. Okay. <laughs> All right, fellas. I I need help spreading giant pride here in Munich. Auf geht's Giants. All right. Auf, Auf geht's, geht's Giants. Auf geht's Giants. Let's go, people. Auf <laughs> geht's Giants. Let's go. Auf geht's Giants.
Certainly will be an exciting atmosphere when the Giants take on the Panthers in Munich. When we come back, Carl Banks goes to the coaches tape to get you ready for the game and final thoughts and more here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. This is the headliner. Now the Giants running attack against Ray Lewis and the Ravens defense. This David ain't Goliath, baby. Yeah! Let's go! New York Giants on three. You know what it is? One, two, three. New York Giants! Hand off Jacobs. Hit in the backfield. Reversing the field left to the 35, 40, 45, 50. Down the left side line to the 40. Step on the man. Hand off Bradshaw. Runs left. Cuts to the 20. Out of attack to the 25. Off to the 30. Here goes Bradshaw. Will anybody catch him? 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, and knocked down at the two-yard line. And off Jacob. Dives over the far line. Touchdown, Giants. Moore breaks through. 40, midfield, and in the Baltimore territory. Jacob to the goal line. Reaches. Touchdown. And that's it. 210 yards rushing today for the New York Giants. Earth, wind, and fire part of that Giants offense of 2008. And don't forget that last game at Giants Stadium, the number one seed on the line, the Giants and Carolina Panthers. It was earth, wind, and fire that carried the Giants to victory. As we welcome you back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford, getting you set for the Giants and Panthers in Munich on Sunday. Carl, time for strategy. And speaking of run game, the Carolina Panthers like to use their run game with Chuba Hubbard. Yeah, Bob, the reason I'm, I'm highlighting the run because these are the things that as a giant defense, they're going to have to account for because the same areas of the defense that teams attack here, here, and then on the edges, they're going to see it until they get it stopped. And here's an inside run here right off of the guard, guard center. Goes in. Now, you got a linebacker with eyes here. He gets frozen. And then your back comes all the way back. So they set these things up. And these are the same types of plays that the Giants will have to contend with. Now, everybody's clogged up. Everybody's blocked. And there's a shoot. Nobody can get off of blocks. Yeah, that's a good job by the center taking out Demario Davis, who's one of the better linebackers in the end. Correct. And then this is an outside run. You can't, if you're a defensive end, if you're an edge responsibility guy because your safety is so far back, he's not the edge responsible guy. You cannot take a guess and get washed back in and think you can go back out. So he slides in. He's sealed now. Tries to get back out. It's too late. He outruns the secondary defender. So you've got to play gap responsible football. No freelancing. So now we're going to take a look at the other side of the ball, Carl. And uh, J.C. Horn. You know, early part of his career, he had to deal with a whole bunch of injuries, but he's extremely athletic. Really athletic. He's, you know, obviously comes from a football family. Eyes the quarterback here. Just stays disciplined, Bob. He doesn't, doesn't get out leveraged by the, the offense. And let's just take a look here. Here he is. Quarterback's moving this way. He's keeping leverage on the football here. And so as the quarterback continues... He, you see him turn with the wide receiver. He does not come up out of his coverage to try to tackle the quarterback. He find, keeps eyes on his receiver. He has a good feel for it, and he gets the interception. Again, doing your job. The other guys are responsible for getting the quarterback. Correct. Down. My job is to cover. And if he's outside leverage, he can't let anybody get outside of him. Charles Harris leads the team with three sacks. A former first-round draft pick of the Dolphins played with Detroit last year, and we're going to watch him in action. Yeah, Bob, this is, again, just great individual effort. Just a speed move on the inside. Just relentless and just keeps pursuing the quarterback. Right, and the other guy, kind of Carl, the other lineman made sure that he kept contained so that Jaden Daniels couldn't get outside of him. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's there, and they know that this giant – quarterback will run the ball he can scramble so they they're going to be disciplined in their pass rush this guy here let's just take a look he starts here and he goes back here just so that the quarterback can't escape and they force him back into the pocket he sees it he's now back into the pocket and they were able to corral him yeah and that's Ashawn Robinson who was with the Giants last year so that's a look at strategy between the Giants and the Carolina Panthers as we get you set for Sunday's game Carl some final thoughts as we take a look at this game 
Obviously, in the second half last week, the Giants moved the ball. They got production offensively. Sure. One week, it's really good defense, no production offensively. How do they get this all together? Listen, it's like if you have to cut the lights on in one, if you have to cut the lights in, on in the whole house, you can't cut it on in one room and cut it off in the other. You've got to keep the light switch on on both, all phases of your football team. And that's how it comes together because you can see from week to week, one unit is doing really well and the other one needs to step it up. Now they just got to do it together. They got to be complimentary. Yeah, and Carl, the Giants have not been good at creating turnovers. I mean, they have one interception so far this year. They're going against either Bryce Young or if Dalton comes in the game. Combined, they've thrown 12. They've got to start making some game-changing plays. Well, yes, and the way you do that is you continue to uh, be relentless towards the quarterback. They are top of the league in sacks. That means that you can get a quarterback under duress, and if you are sounding your coverage, you'll be able to get those turnovers. Been to Germany much in your life? I've been to Europe. I've been to Germany once, but not a whole bunch. Yeah, I've never been in Munich, so it's going to be a lot of fun, and let's see if the Giants can get a win. This week's game between the Giants and the Carolina Panthers is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Visit buyfordnow.com, the official vehicle of the New York Giants. So for Carl Banks... Coach Dable, and our entire crew. I'm Bob Popham. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the Coach Dable Show, presented by Ford.